It was disturbing on Maui where a lot of people in certain parts of the island get their water from water catchment tanks. We were measuring samples of the water and found high levels of aluminum, barium, and strontium. We then took those findings to the health department and the health department conducted rain catchment tests. And what we found was the same average of aluminum, barium, and strontium in the rain catchment we found was the same we were finding in our tanks that people were drinking and using that as their water source. We're finding the same metals worldwide. I'm only working the local area, but everything I've seen, it's uh, aluminum, barium, strontium. The military is spraying another substance into the lower atmosphere. The academics don't mention this because most academics are funded by government grants. When coal is burned by utilities, it produces a heavy ash that settles out, a very fine powdered ash that used to go up the smokestack. But it's so toxic that regulations mandated that this fly ash be trapped on electrostatic precipitators. And coal fly ash is ideal because sprayed into the area where weather occurs, which is where jet planes fly, the fine particles are very much enriched in the toxic elements, mercury, chromium, just a whole suite of 40 elements, aluminum being one. It's a toxic nightmare. And that is harmful for everybody, especially pregnant women, especially for children, especially for people who have compromised immune systems or respiratory systems. It's bad for the elderly. On heavy spray days, a lot of people have noticed sinus problems, headache, irritability, nausea. Anytime you put an aerosol up into the sky, it's gonna fall into the air that we breathe. Obviously, we're inhaling this with every breath. With that, it gets into our systems. We've seen diseases that have never been there, the cancers that are coming up day and day. My name is David L. Lewis. I am a research microbiologist, and I worked for the U.S. EPA's Office of Research and Development for over 31 years in blood tests for human beings, tissue tests, we're seeing the elevation over the last few decades of these metals in the human population. And the health consequences associated with that are very serious. Respiratory mortality went from six down to number three in a six year period. We see issues like Alzheimer's, ADD, other aluminum related illnesses that have gone through the roof literally since the full scale deployment of these programs. It's well known that very fine particles make people live shorter lives, birth weights are lower, cancer, autism is increased. Particularly during the early developmental stages of a child, the neurological effects on the brain and its development is of grave concern since the forms of aluminum that are being sprayed into the atmosphere can cross the blood-brain barrier and contact the brain directly and cause damage to the brain cells. This is all, I think, is a result of change of environment, all these toxins that are being sprayed everywhere. It's like a mass genocide that is going on here. People are not prepared for this. Innocent people among us, their health is being damaged. And that is, in my view, a crime against humanity. There's something called aerotoxic syndrome. Now, I now have been speaking with doctors and with pilots. Many people are becoming ill. They're getting neurological conditions. They're getting extra fatigue, they're getting higher rate of cancer. Commercial airlines fly pretty much at the same altitude or around where geoengineering programs are taking place. And those have much higher concentrations of aerosols. What they do, they pull in some air 
into the cabin from outside. So as a result, people are getting a higher concentration of these metals that are coming into the cabin. And we're seeing this issue of aerotoxicity. That's impacting frequent flyers, flight attendants, flight crews, pilots. There are two pilots from British Airways, at both age 43, that died in 2012. This is due to aerotoxic syndrome. All the ailments of people who are now unable to fly because they are too ill to fly are consistent with heavy metal toxicity. It's destroying our children's lungs. It's destroying our health. These are programs that are creating death. Results of climate models indicate that reflection of sunlight away from the Earth can offset most climate change in most places most of the time. But it will damage some places. It puts aluminum and other things in chemically mobile forms, soluble in water, so they can get into plants and to animals. And by doing that, you're changing the whole chemical structure of fruits and vegetables and animals and then you're eating toxic food. So the whole thing comes into that science of geoengineering. You've got a tremendous rise in Alzheimer's, not just in humans, in bees. I mean, how can bees be suffering with high aluminium toxicity? Aluminium is ubiquitous. It's all around us, it's in the earth and everything else. It's never caused any problems before, but something has changed. But why should it suddenly start to affect the bees or even whales now have been found to have extremely high levels of aluminium toxicity affecting their health. It's causing huge stress, manifesting itself in beetle invasions and in fungus invasions and all of those are setting back our ecological patterns. It's not normal, of course, the environment is changing, the skies are changing. We have a substance that is being literally poured in the air above us. Rainwater extracts aluminum, and so you have two effects from that. You have the aluminum poisoning of plants, and you have the soil pH being changed, typically making it more alkaline. This is a substance that harms virtually everything. So everything is polluted now. You know, even the crops that we eat and then supposed to be organic, they're not organic. How do you control the skies? Your organic soil is being polluted by what's going up, uh, up there. Aluminum makes up about 8% of the Earth's crust, but aluminum is strongly bound to oxygen and to the silicates, so it doesn't move around. And so all of life developed without ever it being exposed to aluminum that could move around. And we have no natural immunity to mobile aluminum, nor do plants. We have tree decline in all areas, even areas that are getting an abundance of rain. Those areas are testing positive for the primary ingredients in geoengineering programs. These programs are about death and destruction. And why? What happens when our forests collapse? That's the lungs of our planet. You can see impacts on all of the trees. There are just tons of dead branches scattered throughout the whole tree, which probably reduced its canopy in half, knocked its life expectancy down probably in half. That's what got me concerned when I was working for Fish and Wildlife, that it's affecting all of our trees that much and the trees aren't gonna live as long. If they're not living as long, and then the, the species that use them are also impacted. This is very common now in the Chicago area. It's about every three or four trees that we're seeing is dead in this community. What we notice in Maui is about a third of our rainforest is actually dead. Geoengineering is changing our weather, and the explanation is that by changing your weather patterns, you're changing what's normal for all of the species that have evolved there. So let's say we were doing geoengineering because we wanted to make the weather a little bit better. Then we'd be balancing some risky geoengineering against the benefits of making the weather a little better. And in my view, the right time to wait until we did that would be infinity. Anytime you put an aerosol into the atmosphere, it's going to affect wind speeds. It's going to affect cloud nucleation. An interesting thing is geoengineers are talking about how if these programs were to be initiated, which they have been, how they will have to utilize and implement 
weather control and determine where it rains, when it rains, and who specifically gets rain.